to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Help us, Spirit of the Living God. Grant us grace tonight. In the name of Jesus. Seated. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I came here with joy in my heart. I also came here with a burden in my spirit. It's an honor, Pastor Dele. Thank you so much. It truly is an honor to be a contributor to help build a body. This has been my passion for many years to see that all together as a body that we become matured as far as spiritual things are concerned. And um, I don't know how far I'll be able to cover in this, this conference, but I pray that God will grant us grace. Wherever we stop, that, that will be fine for this time. I have a course content. Is it all right if we write? There is a course content for... I'm, I'm really I'm really not not interested in preaching as far as this conference is concerned I think the idea is to communicate this truth and to really um, give it the justice it demands to get into our spirits hallelujah and so I divided my my session into three and um, We'll try to take the first part tonight and then in the morning then we'll wrap up in the evening it was just an attempt by the spirit of god to continue where pastor poju pastor godman and you know all of the ministrations that have come before me number one is the assignment the assignment i hope that we'll be able to cover a thorough understanding of kingdom advancement, the mandate of the church. If God grants us grace, we'll be able to look at um, three very important aspects of the assignment. Number one is understanding the cosmos. Number church, this system that God built himself as believers. I really believe that this is a very major issue in the body of Christ. Because when the assignment is not thoroughly understood, all activities happening, but believers will not be built, believers will not be edified, and the kingdom would not advance. So the assignment. Number two, the second part is called, we are going to examine doctrine, the mystery of stature and maturity. Doctrine. That will be the second part. Here we are going to be redefining terminologies that have been abused in the body of Christ, either due to ignorance, and then I hope that we'll be able to look at the pillars of the Christian faith under doctrine. That the only way believers truly mature is doctrine. And if we desire to see a mature church, we must reintroduce back to the body of Christ more than personalized dealings, more than visionary experience. There must be a restoration of doctrine. Doctrine is the mystery that is responsible for the stature and the maturity of the body. Hallelujah. Um, and it is also the cure to heresies, the cure to imbalances in the body. It's called doctrine. So we'll look at that hopefully in the morning. And then the last part of this, as God grants us grace, I would like to wrap up 
by examining a bit on the coming move of God. I think it's important that we, we have a prophetic approach to what we are dealing. What is God doing? This present truth. What is he saying now? We'll look at God's end time agenda. The mystery of Enoch and Elijah. There are two spiritual systems that are signposts. They signify something in the spirit as far as the move of God is concerned. And then I hope that we'll be able to look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit if that is possible. We cannot talk about the global harvest and the end time agenda of God without ignoring the Holy Spirit, without involving the Holy Spirit and giving him his place. It was the Holy Spirit who birthed the church and the Holy Spirit is called the Lord of the harvest. He's not only comforter, it's a name that we have even forgotten. You know he's called the Lord of the harvest. The Lord of the harvest is not an angel. The Lord of the harvest is not Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the harvest. The Lord of the harvest is the Spirit of God. And then, probably if God grants us grace, we'll look at the ministry of power as an end time strategy. So we have a lot to cover. Um, let me apologize in advance wherever. This is a school, so whatever I'm not able to cover, please, I'd like you to hold on to Pastor Dele's um, garment and pursue him diligently. He's a veteran as far as the exegesis of scripture is concerned, so he will be able to do justice to that. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. We have come to learn. We have come as students in the school of the Spirit. We have come laying our pride, our prejudices, with our hearts open to hear you speak to us. We are ready to grow. We are ready to be built. We are ready to be chiseled like living stones so that we can fit accurately into this structure. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will grant us grace. Grant us grace, abundance of grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So let's, let's start with the assignment. While, while I sat back there listening to Pastor Dele share, I was already very blessed. You know, when you read Acts chapter 1, very powerful charge you gave, sir. Right? You could just reduce the volume a bit so that it doesn't distract. Thank you. In Acts chapter 1, you see, the Bible lets us know all through the life of Jesus. The disciples did not really have an opportunity to understand the full scope of what he came to do. Are we together now? Even though Jesus taught in his earth work, he taught them on the fundamentals of the kingdom. But because they were not filled with the Holy Spirit, there were things they could not bear. Jesus himself said it. I have many other things to tell you. Some of those many things was what he spent 40 days telling them. You understand now? He said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. And then some of the things I said that you did not understand, he will bring back to your remembrance. Many times you will hear them remember. They will recall certain things Jesus said and did. But it's important for us to understand the assignment because not understanding our corporate mandate as believers, not understanding where we are coming from and where we are going to, it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why there is a lot of confusion in the body of Christ. There is an old story that predates our existence. We came in the middle of history and it's only intelligent that we look back to be able to glean by the spirit what happened what is this all about church services what are they all about miracles what are they all about breakthroughs nothing was supposed to be celebrated in isolation 
everything was supposed to find its credence when and if connected to kingdom. So you don't just celebrate breakthroughs, miracles, prophecy, healing. The challenge today is we have cut them away and we, we, we have not connected them to kingdom. So whilst we celebrate them, we learn about them, we find out that it is not ultimately leading to kingdom advance. Rather, in many regards, it's just the promotion of flesh and the agenda of men. Are we together now? So, what is this all about? What is our going to church about? Do we have to go to church? What is the preaching about? Why will a man leave his career and leave everything that seems to represent his self-worth in the name of answering a call? What, what is the call about? Now he claims he has some conviction or he was sent by God and would risk his life, put himself in trouble, his family in trouble for the rest of his life over uh, advocacy of a message that sometimes looks very confusing over a God who doesn't seem to show up and say thank you and dies in the process. Missionaries have died advocating a message that many are yet to understand. There is something called the reproach of Christ. And many people have left the excellency of the palace to bear upon them that reproach. What is this all about? Please pay attention. I came from a very strong evangelical background, just like Pastor Dele was sharing. And in all honesty, um, of course, we're trained to just love God. We, I saw very sincere people who were passionate about missions and all of that. But we didn't have a very intelligent education as to what Christianity was about. And did you know, Pastor, pick a believer at random in no particular order, even a worker, and ask him, what is this about? He would tell you it's about the advancement of the agenda of a church. He will tell you, I do this because I love my pastor. He may tell you, I do this because I love Jesus. He will tell you, I do this because I, I just want to make heaven. All kinds of reasons. The, now I'm speaking to the body of Christ and I'm speaking with every sense of humility and regard to the body. But the extent of cluelessness that the average believer has as to the motivation behind everything we do in the kingdom is the reason why we easily fall prey to the devil and the reason why there is no sustainability in the things that we do the bible talks in luke chapter one um dr luke was speaking and he spoke about the things that are most surely believed things that were done from a standpoint of persuasion and conviction now theologically speaking you know that um, the Bible Genesis 1 verse 1 the Bible says in the beginning it was just a framework to now help us begin to understand God's program in time it says in the beginning not from the beginning God created the heavens and the earth we do not exactly know what moment in time that happened and we do not even know what happened before that time but one thing we know for sure is that there has we are in the middle of many dispensations past and there are many dispensations ahead of us the bible starts in the middle of a story and the bible ends with the beginning of another one that's that's something this is this is this is truth from scripture are we together so in the beginning god created that was not the first thing he was doing as god there were other things he had been doing what they are we don't know we just know that he created the heavens and the earth that was not the first time otherwise he would not be god there were other the activities that he was doing before that time the bible does not give us the luxury of having a thorough knowledge but we know one thing for sure. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It does not directly give us an opportunity to know why he did it the first time. Because Adam was not in the picture when that happened. Why he created the heavens and the earth. It was not for an, an accommodation for himself. He was already existing. 
If he created the heavens and the earth, he was not living in either realms. Heaven is his throne, not his house. Uh -uh. Are we together now? Yes. So the Bible says then, it jumps to verse 2. Theologically speaking, it's called the gap theory. And attempts to explain what happened. The Bible is written in summary. So sometimes you may not really see the time lag. Between Genesis 1 verse 1, Genesis 1 verse 2, were ages apart. The Bible now says, there was darkness, there was void, verse 2. It says, darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, this darkness we see in many scriptures, I don't want to go into that now because there's a lot for us to cover. You will see that a product of the judgment of Lucifer. It didn't just happen because according to the character of God, everything he creates is good. So he couldn't have created a heaven and an earth that is good and then all of a sudden we see darkness. It was a system because flood in scripture is always symbolic of judgment. Waters talk of people, waters talk of abundance, flood always in scripture talks of judgment. So when the enemy comes, comma, like a flood in judgment, the spirit of God will raise a standard against him. You understand now? So the flood there came as a result of the judgment of Lucifer. When Job, we know again theologically that the book of Genesis, people argue that it predated Job. Other theologians agree that it was immersed between Genesis 1 and the last. Um, we're not really interested. We know that it's somewhere, somewhere between Genesis 1 and then the last book of Genesis. But then the Bible tells us that there was a man called Job who feared the Lord and eschewed evil. Tragedy fell upon that man and in the height of his frustration, the Bible says he summoned God. Very dangerous statement. That a man can summon God and God came. Chapter 38 and verse 1. When God finally came through a whirlwind to Job, there was a very deep discussion. It says that when he came, he began to ask Job and there was a discussion. Let's look at the first four verses. Am I boring you already? This is a minister's conference, so wherever we stop, we stop. If we, if we get somewhere, we just pray in tongues and we go to bed. Verse 2. Who is he that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Do you know what this is? God was saying, Job, you've been saying a lot of nonsense from the standpoint of ignorance. I've been listening to you patiently. Now I have come. You have compelled the discussion. And he asked him a few questions. Verse 3. He said, guard up your loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer me. Now, this is a communication of the mysteries of creation. Question 1. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? You don't find that in Genesis 1. No, that was not there. Uh-uh. This was the creation before the recreation that we call creation. There was an actual foundation laying ceremony. Where is that foundation today? Because geography tells us the earth is round. And here we see, please keep that scripture, that there is a real foundation. Declare if you have understanding. Next question. It says, who laid the measures thereof if thou knowest? Or who stretched the line upon it? Verse 6. It says, Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? And who laid the cornerstone thereof? A ceremony happened that day. Verse 7. This is a ceremony founded. It says, The morning stars. I don't want to go into discussing who the morning stars are. And the sons of God are. Wait to keep that scripture there. Jesus had not yet died. And there was still that mention of sons of God. Who were they? <laughs> ah, goodness. I'm sorry, I don't sound sarcastic. I mean, I'm just amazed at the ignorance in the body. You know, the more we know God, honestly, it should bring us back to our knees because a lot of the nonsense we pride ourselves in, while we continue to pride ourselves, the realm of the spirit is surprised at the vastness of our ignorance and yet the pride that follows that ignorance. Look at this scripture. Look at it. It's in your Bible. 
that there was a day brothers and sisters we never there were no men when God was recreating the earth Genesis 1 verse 2 it was only the spirit of God and the voice of God light be light be light be until Adam came but God is saying before this your story there was another one You need to know this to know why. You need to know this to know why he's bringing barrenness. Then you will not. You will now know why he gave you an anointing to heal. If you do not understand the story, you will be in the middle of a history you don't understand. So why is he giving us power? Why does he want all men saved? You see why evangelism is not effective because there is no history that supports that provides the power and the force. There is an old story that we must understand. Are we blessed? Yes, you are brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to... One more time. You are brooding yeah, over every darkness. You are causing Keep that scripture there. So the Bible says, when the morning stars sang together, these were still people who were worshipping the Lamb. So when you have this revelation and you worship God, you will know it's a privilege. Because way before the agenda of our dispensation came, there were people nobler than us as far as the quality of their creation is concerned. These angels, I, will, I hope I have the time, I will teach you the material of creating angels was not dust. No, angels were created from quantized light. It's in your Bible. The material of their creation is light. Lucifer being a cherub, he was specially crafted. The, the garden of Eden was a similitude of the throne that was created for Lucifer because his assignment, man, the assignment of Jesus to our dispensation was Lucifer's assignment to the dispensation of the inhabitants. Thou was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. It's in your Bible. Lucifer, the first occupant of the garden of Eden was not Adam. No. It was Lucifer's garden. So you understand the vendetta between Lucifer and mankind. There is an old story. Lucifer wanted what God gave man because he wanted a situation where he could run a parallel government we've thought that Lucifer wanted to dethrone God no 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 mm -mm. Lucifer was not looking for an ability to dethrone God you want to know the agenda of Lucifer look at the system of the Antichrist it does not seek to dethrone it seeks to run a parallel government so Lucifer never wanted to dethrone God, but he wanted to run a government so you could choose either God or him. And don't downplay that agenda because he led one third of the angels. They believed that agenda was possible. Lucifer is someone who there is a lot of lessons to learn from. Oh dear, I wish, I wish that um, this was a night vigil. The last, the first thing we hear about Lucifer after the judgment is that he was cast down to the earth. Humiliated. This man landed the earth and was roaming around. The next time we see Lucifer, he had the keys of the earth and he was talking to Jesus, bow to me. You should respect such a man. I drove you down from heaven and just in a few years, you have deceived the entire kings and made them loyal to you. And you come to Jesus and say, this is the progress report. From the time I fell from heaven till now, I have gotten the keys. All the glories of the world are now under my influence. What did he tell the kings? If we do not understand this, I will teach that in the last session, the coming move of God. We must understand the name of Satan, Satan, and that name, devil. These are names that if we do not understand the seductive deception that the spirit of the Antichrist is bringing over the body. Intelligent kings gave up their will, their mind, and they said we will bow to you. 
Satan fell from heaven, humiliated, roaming around the earth for so long. When the recreation in Genesis 1 verse 2 and 3 was happening, he was a witness. It was not only God alone who was speaking. Satan was a witness. He was seeing it. There's no time I would have shown you again that among all the beings who had fallen from heaven, Satan is only one of them. Satan is not the only person who had offended God. There are many other offenders. We do not know what dispensation and what their offense were, but we know today they are still bound in everlasting chains. Satan is not one of them. That means they are even worse than him. And the Bible says they were bound for the sake of the elect. It's in your Bible. Wow. Then you will understand why the lake of fire was created. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. I hope you know. That's where Satan will be casted there. It can be his kingdom. The lake of fire is part of his God's invention. It's part of his justice system. Let's pray in the spirit in one minute. Shilarus kibarando shalakros kebadiana. Mighty God. Masobra tasile heshene katosia katabra. Shkadabrande galekosia dabalatusia. honestly Pastor Dele I believe that one of the things we must begin to press for as we see the clock ticking to the coming of Jesus we must cry for the spirit of revelation in reality not so that we can preach sermons and make a name for ourselves believe me when I tell you there is a lot of ignorance occultists know what I'm telling you Many people who have studied other religions. What do you have to say this? The Bible talks about the book of Enoch. Now, uh, please, our online community, this is just a communication because it's in scripture. So that we don't have people who now misunderstand what we are saying. The book of Enoch is a book that the Bible itself recognizes. Enoch is the seventh man from creation. Are we together now? I will teach that in the last session. He is one of the two signs that must happen before the coming of Christ is the mystery of Enoch and the mystery of Elijah. They were not just men. They were spiritual systems that signify something. Are we together now? You cannot understand the coming move of God until you understand Enoch and Elijah. Malachi tells us before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. Elijah is the spirit that always foreruns revival. Wherever God is about to show up in a city, Elijah must precede. He has an assignment to restore the altars of the Lord. That would deal with it. I'm just running ahead of myself. We have a serious discussion here. But I'm saying that the powers and the principalities that we attempt to rebuke and do all of this, they are aware of this. You see, the word exousia, when I teach on the ministry of power, the word exousia, there are four words that are used to signify power and authority. One is called iskos, one is called kratos, the other is called dunamis, and the last is called exousia. Dunamis is the outworkings of the power of the spirit. Exousia is the outworking of the authority that comes through enlightenment. So there is something that leads to exousia. There is something that leads to dunamis. Are we together now? Merely just confessing scripture and just saying in the name of Jesus, I command this devil to go just because Jesus said in my name. If that were that easy, there would be no need for a 40 days lecture. Because he already gave them the name. And they went and returned back and said, even the devils. Now he was teaching them something. Why teach them doctrine again? When you had given them the name. Before he died though. And they returned back with that power. So there is an old story. The first occupant. That was, that was in Eden. The garden of the Lord. He was perfect in beauty. People say Lucifer was a musician. Well, the, Lucifer was not a musician. No. Lucifer's assignment was the light bearer. This is the Bible. Son of the morning. His name was given. 
He was the light bearer, the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom. It was an assignment. Because you see, your age in the realm of the spirit or in the throne room is measured by how much light you emit, which is a product of how much of the face of God you have seen. What did the Bible say when we behold him? We are changed. It's not a principle to this. It's an old principle that anybody who beholds God, you have to be changed. Now, by reason of Lucifer's assignment, the opportunity to have that frequent contact with God who is light. And it was on the strength of his illumination that he said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. I will be like the most high. And the Bible called that contemplation iniquity until iniquity was found not sin iniquity rebellion are we together now and then there was war in heaven and you know all of that all of that and then now god put man by the way let me say this the garden of eden is still intact very intact the garden of eden was not in this three-dimensional realm the earth as we know it now has been um, it's lost its original design. The spiritual architecture of earth that included Eden is not what we see now. We're matured and spiritual enough to know that. Because when you read the book of Revelation, Eden is still there. The tree of life is still there. Are we together now? The only tree that we no longer see is the tree of the knowledge of, the good, of good and evil because by that time we've all made our choices. So we have chosen life. And so there will not be need for that other tree again. Those trees, trees in the Bible were not just, they are symbolic of men. He shall be like a tree planted by the streams of water. Are we together now? Yes. When we understand this, then we'll understand why satan came the bible tells us that when god created adam and eve he gave them instructions and he left them he would come in the cool of the day it was not a difficult thing to interface with the realm of the spirit as we have now that you have to pray and cry for visions and no 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 it was not like that god would come in the cool of the day and fellowship with man and the bible says satan now notice According to spiritual ranking, Satan did not have the authority to confront Adam. We never see a conversation between Satan and Adam. Satan had to respect that spiritual organogram. He respect that spiritual organogram. He came to Adam through Eve. And today he still wants to get the Adam, the Christ, through his bride, the Eve of that Adam. That's why Satan continues to come to us, the church, because we are the Eve of that second Adam. Are we together now? And the same strategy he used over Eve is what is still coming now. The seduction that leads to deception. Did God really say? That is a theme. Did God really say? He does not say it now by speaking. He says it by using situations and circumstances, but it's still the same question. Did God really say you will rise? Did God really say the church will grow? He will use things. When you understand the strategy of the devil, Paul said, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Is the word stratomai, his methodologies. So there was, there is an old story. Even Satan is called that old serpent. There was a lamentation in heaven that that old serpent had been casted to the earth. He said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Look how dangerous this guy was. That when he fell to the earth, there was a lamentation. They said, those in the earth, I, I really feel sorry for you because someone, a stranger has come to your domain. And the Bible said he is angry. So anger, this thing called anger, is a revealer of the presence of spirits. It's not just the issue of attitude. Uh -uh. 
There is a dimension of anger that normal men should not have. If your anger exceeds that dimension, it calls for the introduction of the power of God in your life. Because ordinary men do not have that level of anger. Now you understand where terrorists get their empowerment. You should, humans by default cannot stretch beyond certain levels of brutality. It is not given to men. Watch an accident happen. They won't ask you whether you're a Christian or you're a Muslim. Everybody comes. Those are men. But when you see a man who can kill you and butcher you and not feel anything, someone who fell with anger is at work in this system. We really need to know what we are after. Remember, we are looking at the assignment. Is it true that the assignment is to build a building as important as that is? Is it true that the assignment is to get membership as important as that is? Is it true that the assignment is to look good and teach well and hold conventions and conferences? Is that really it? Does it sound like it to you now? No. When man fell, there are three levels, pastor. Please, while you are sitting, just be praying for me. Let me just contain myself and be able to constructively communicate something this night. When man fell, there are three levels of perception that God designed in man. The highest was supposed to be discernment, followed by reason, then emotions, in that order. If you ever switch them, there will be a consequence on man. Discernment should be his highest faculty of perception, followed by reason based on principles and then emotions. For as long as that order is honored, the devil will never be able to penetrate man. His assignment is to find a way of switching because there is a weakness with emotions, the impulses of feelings. I need to say that so that you will know what happened to Eve. Are we together now? Yes. Satan was not merely talking to her. Uh -uh. He was seeing something in the realm of the spirit he wanted to disconfigure. Because until that happens, he will not be able to attack her. And he used words. Discernment. Then reason. Based on the logic of scripture and the principles of life. Then emotions. Now, emotions are very powerful. Are we together? They connect us to people. They connect us to principles. They connect us to our environment. But emotions have a weakness. You should not express them at a moment for too long. They have a consequence. So they are short term. If you understand this, Satan switched it. That was the idea behind a concept that is hardly understood in the body called covenant. Covenant was a system God invented to ensure man remains stable even though he is an emotional being. So he created a system that overrides emotions so that you are sponsored by another framework that is more than what you feel, more than what you think. Are you seeing now? Because if you depend on emotions, the day you love God, you may pray. The day you don't love God, you see that? Covenant service, service in the house of God is called covenant because your emotions can make you feel bad because of cold and you won't come to church. But a covenant is a system that was invented to help override your emotions and maintain consistency. It's not about Old or New Testament. No, it's more than that. So man fell. Let's, let's hurry up. Let's make sense of this. Man fell. Watch this. The Bible says when man fell, the Lord God, he called him the talking spirit that he came in the cool of the day and did not see Adam. God did not find Adam. Where can I hide from your presence? But now he's not seeing Adam because look at the question God is asking. Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. He says, who told you? You have begun to listen. Someone has introduced an information. Who told you you were naked? You see now, the solical realm, there has been an activation of your emotions. Who did this? Who told you? And he said, the woman 
that you have kept with me. Now, let me share something very powerful. In the kingdom, you transfer power by transferring responsibility. When the Bible says, do everything without complaining or arguing, it's a very powerful advice. Do you know the moment he transferred responsibility to the woman, God did not talk to him again. He said, woman, now that this man has transferred authority to you, if the woman kept quiet, she will become the head of man immediately. Yes. This is Bible. Everything I'm telling you is scripture. Woman, what is this that you have done? The woman now said, the serpent, he beguiled me. You see where Satan became the, she transferred authority by blaming. Now, Satan did not complain. That's what made him the God of this world. So you now see why Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate. And when they were talking to him, what did he do? Yes, sir. Satan became the God of this world. Now watch this. God banished man out of Eden. Eden was not destroyed. There's no record in scripture that Eden was burnt with fire. No. He banished man out of Eden to now what we call our earth. And two things protected Eden. One, the cherubims. Two, the flaming sword. That means it was not just a natural place that needed gates like this. I told you Eden is still intact. Eden was lifted from our domain. And all we had was this, our stratosphere and this, our atmosphere. Eden is still intact. Hallelujah. Man now began to walk through his senses. Now, let me explain something very briefly. And then we'll now begin to make sense of everything I'm saying. Don't forget what we're dealing with, the assignment. All of this drama I'm acting is to get us to really understand the assignment. This is where our message corporately comes out from. Are we blessed? Yeah. Until Adam and Eve... There was no other dispensation recorded in Bible where reproduction happened. No. Every time God wanted to multiply, it was through creation, not reproduction. Our dispensation would be the first to see that invention. Are we together now? So Satan, in all the archives of knowledge he had, never knew that it was a possibility that there could be multiplication through reproduction. Listen very carefully and you understand why barrenness. Why all of these things. So that it is on the strength of that knowledge. That anointing can flow through you. When you are praying for a barren woman. You are not just attesting to the fact that you are a man of God. You are coming from the standpoint of intelligence. And the realm of the spirit knows that you are not just a dispenser of power blindly. You are coming full of knowledge. Are we together now? Yes. Satan was happy because according to him, he believed there would only be two people on earth. So his focus was who else will be created. He did not know that a strategy was now put in man. Are we together now? Suddenly, the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife. Satan began to see the stomach of a woman protrude. What is in that stomach? He had never seen reproduction. And all of a sudden, she gave birth to Cain. You now see what made Satan come to Cain. Cain was innocent. What did Cain do? Another entity. So if a woman can produce another entity, that means in a short time, the earth will be filled with bodies that the Spirit of God can rest upon and they can fulfill God's agenda. And Satan said, let's get into that man. Abel now came and Satan said, no, Cain, I have to walk through you to kill Abel. What is the whole agenda? It's a depopulation agenda. Does that make sense to you what is happening on earth? That a depopulation agenda is not some group. It's an old agenda. Satan had tried through dispensations and failed. Satan hates men because men have bodies. A body has thou prepared for me. Find out how many people died because a child was born. Moses. 
Find out how many people died. Are we together? Listen, this is helping to now make sense that the thing which is, is the thing which has been. So when you see, whether it is terrorism, whatever it is, you now, when you are praying, you pray from the lens of this intelligence that we just found ourselves in the middle of history. This thing is an old story. It's not about the foundation in your family. That story is deeper than that. It's not about the devil wanting to make you poor or not wanting you to have a child. That's, that is a little piece of the old story. And Cain killed Abel. When he killed Abel, now, theologically speaking, they say Cain and Abel are twins because the Bible just said Adam knew his wife once and we see these two come, right? But then the Bible now says again that Adam knew his wife again. Very dangerous statement. That was a discovery that was going to shock Satan. That this potential to give birth is theoretically infinite. That made the woman dangerous. You now see why Satan looks for women conduct deliverance for 10 people eight of them will be women it is not a, oh dear i testify i testify that your goodness is real your goodness is real i testify for a very long time i wondered why the devil will not let women rest is it just because they have a womb? Is it because they are beautiful? Is it because men pursue them? No, I found the reason. Satan, listen carefully to what Jesus said or God said. He said, the seed shall bruise the head. Are we together now? Yes. There's something about women and the anger that their presence creates to the gate of hell. No wonder the first person to see the resurrected Christ was a woman. The first person to see Christ resurrected was a woman. Let's get back to our discussion. The Bible now says Adam knew his wife again and she bore him a child and he named the child Seth. He says, and men began again to call upon the name of the Lord. Now, but watch this. The Bible now said this guy called Cain, even though he killed his brother, even though he talked with God, he did not change. That's a lesson I can spend all night there. That just talking with God alone does not equal transformation. Cain was talking with God, an encounter that very few people have had, yet it did not change him proximity to the word proximity to spiritual activities does not produce transformation it means we have to invent another formula such that all those who come close to us as they are listening and they are in church for many years we shouldn't make that assumption that just because they are hearing the word of God they are changing the first person we see as a man talking with God directly in rebellion and you know what the first statement was? It's not I worship you. It's not I love you, your majesty. The first word that came from man to God aside from Adam and Eve is am I my brother's keeper? Here's where the issue of relationship came. Am I my brother's keeper? Why should I have any business with my brother? Provided it does not support my interest. This is the book of the beginnings. Everything. You can literally trace everything about men. I hope God is speaking to us. And I pray that I'm making sense. Hallelujah. From that time, every time Satan found a man, three things, pastor. Three. Don't forget this, please. Every time Satan finds a man, he's interested in three things. Number one, the handing over of the will of that man to him. Number two, the building of a system that is loyal to him. The Bible says, and Cain departed from the presence of God. Are we together? And when he departed from the presence of God, that means willfully, he was no longer in submission to the authority of the kingdom. 
And the Bible says he built a city. From that day, every time Satan finds men, he's obsessed with building cities. The Tower of Babel, Darius, building Babylon, Herod, till tomorrow. Every time Satan finds men, his obsession is to build a system and a city that does not honor God. This is the system we call Babylon, a representation of the Antichrist system. This is the system and the operation that controls our social environment that we call cosmos. Are we together now? And Satan, had, Satan did that by programming a set of beliefs and an approach to life. The Bible calls it, in one word, aeon. The thinking pattern that comes with the age. So he says, Genesis, I mean, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, brethren, therefore, he says, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of worship or service. Verse 2, he says, and be not conformed to this world. It's not the word cosmos, it's the word aeon. There is a thinking pattern like a software. That is, the, that is the mindset that is responsible for this architecture we call Babylon. So the three Hebrew boys said, no, we will not bow to you. O king, we respect you. But when it has to do with building a government and a system that is not consistent with kingdom, we will not bow. And there was a consequence. I don't have the time to go to the book of Daniel and show you, but please do well to read the entire book of Daniel. You will find out, sir, that when it had to do, Satan never projects himself. He projects self. Once it is self, Satan is glorified, even if it is not him. You read Revelation 13, the same thing. Satan does not come out to say, I am Satan. He just says, anything that is not God is welcome. Nebuchadnezzar built whose image? Please talk to me, whose image? So the moment you find yourself magnifying and glorifying self, don't ever be deceived. It is still Satan masquerading to an agency he has designed called self. So when you know this as a man of God, whilst you teach, you don't just sit there and just religiously say as the spirit leads you can bring teachings that dethrone self in people because every manifestation of self I tell you is Satan when Cain built a city he named it after his son to glorify himself when Nimrod Kush in Genesis 11 theologically speaking you know that Nimrod killed his father and married his mother Semiramai who is purported to be the queen of heaven are we together now yes that's theology Nimrod Kush gathered the people they went to the land of China and he says go to come let us build brick and mortar and let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens now there are many theological debates whether that was a physical kingdom or spiritual kingdom one thing we know is that it was a threat because God himself came down to destroy it the fall of man is not just about sinning against God uh -uh. it's deeper than that the fall of man is not just about disobeying God the fall of man is an attempt to glorify self so just because you are free from sin does not mean the journey has finished there is the next assignment to dethrone self if we don't teach believers this the moment they, that's why we have many people in church who get born again and say I'm born again for 10 years now he becomes a deacon now he becomes a worker and you still see self you are not free until self dies no matter how, how born again you are if self is still alive, there is a legitimate ground for the devil to be glorified in and through your life. Are we blessed? So man fell. From that time, all that we see happen, listen carefully, is a battle of two kingdoms. Right until Acts chapter 1, when Jesus rounded up his lecture. Please understand. It doesn't matter whether you are talking about the poetic books, 
the five books of Moses, the Pentateuch, the poetic books, and, and the prophets, minor prophets, major prophets. Now you come to all of the other books, Gideon. All of those characters is just the passage of time, the real story. From the time man fell, there was a battle. And it's been a battle of two kingdoms. Replaced by different actors. But the same battle. What is the battle? Light over darkness. The kingdom of light. And an antichrist system. When God entered a covenant. Listen carefully. When God entered a covenant with father Abraham. And that covenant brought out a people a people who were carved out immediately satan knew that the savior who would redeem the people must come out of these people israel became a threat everywhere they went nobody cared whether they hurt or anybody or not once you were a jew satan suspected that the savior that seed that will bruise the head of the serpent would come out of them You now see what happened when Jesus made that declaration finally. Because Satan kept suspecting people. A prophet will arise, he will suspect, is that the Savior? Then the prophet will die. A prophet will arise, someone else will arise, and Satan will keep suspecting. Finally, John the Baptist arose, and he, Satan kept speaking to the scribes and the Pharisees. Are you the one to come? Why was he interested about that one to come? John further confused them. Who are you? He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. What kind of description is that? Finally, a young virgin is minding her business one day, celebrating like every other lady, preparing they were going to see her parents. They had even given a down payment. She got up one morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Getting ready to prepare herself and listen to the lectures from the rabbi. An angel suddenly appears. Bringing glad tidings. And he says, you are favored. And she wondered, what sort of salutation is this now? She had read that once upon a time, Emmanuel would come. She had read that once upon a time would come, the burden, this corruption, this bondage of corruption upon people will be lifted. It's amazing how many things you have read in the Bible that you don't know you are the one who will fulfill it. Let me tell you this. Just because it is in the Bible and it was written before you were born does not mean everything has been fulfilled. There are still prophecies to be fulfilled. And can I tell you the truth? This is not some motivation. One day you will read where it was written concerning you. As a person, you will know with all humility that this description is me. When Nigeria was written in the Bible, Isaiah 18, Nigeria was not yet am amalgamated. Lord Lugard was not even born. Yet it was written there that a strong and a people, a great people will come whose rivers divide. This is a prophecy. Find out how many things were written when Jesus went in Luke chapter 4. He read the messianic prophecy as a little boy when the scribes were teaching him. He was looking and said, my God, if these people know that this is the person who has come to fulfill it. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled. Are we blessed? Yes, and so he told the woman, he said, you are highly favored. All of a sudden, you will bear a child, this and that. How shall these things be? She said, seeing that I know not a man. And he said, the power of the highest will come upon you. Now, from that time, it was, it was a major controversy. Imagine what happens. You say you are a virgin. And all of a sudden your stomach starts protruding. Joseph said, I'm an honorable man. I don't mean to embarrass you. Hold my hands. Let me go back to your parents and quietly hand you over to them. And the angel appeared and said, no, don't do that. There is prophecy manifesting. It will be an honor for you to be the father of this child in the earth now from a human standpoint. Now watch this. I'm taking out time to show you this thing because brothers and sisters, if we do not know this, we will preach many sermons, but we'll never get the message that represents the mandate that saves. 
why Jesus why salvation why evangelism why church planting why should we pray for crowds to come because we have it's the same body of Christ that this problem has been tearing people for years other people say, why are you talking about increase? We're okay like that. Other people are saying, you are, you are saying we're okay because you are, we're wicked. I'm trying to solve that problem because if we do not understand this, many of the things we do in church will now not make sense. Why do you have to organize a conference like this? To what end? Pastor Dele, did you have to do it? You already have the revelation. What compelled you to inconvenience yourself and spend so much? When you understand this great assignment, my brothers and my sisters, it will supply fire in you that will wake you up in the night. When others are sleeping and clapping and saying you are building churches, you will act like you just got born again. There is a fire that will be set up in your bones because you know that there is a message that is bigger than reputation. There is a, you will bear the reproach of Christ with honor and joy and not settle for these mundane deceptions that continue to deceive people. Are we together? Yeah. Satan, when he meets a man, he's interested in three things. Number one, turning your heart totally against the government of the Christ. Number two, using you to build a system or to be part of a system that is totally anti-Christ. And he does that by introducing a set of beliefs and values. It's a system. He uses the word and does something to your mind. That way you know that evangelism alone is not going to change men. Because those men, sin is only one of the problem. There is still a software at work in them that even when they are saved, they are not free. It is for this reason he gave unto some apostles and prophets. Are you seeing why I'm taking doctrine? Because the assignment of doctrine is to now like a baby who just got born do you leave the baby like that i'm not a woman but when when a baby comes out you, you say congratulations you arrived and no there is a lot that goes on is that true you have to wash that baby and start over a course of time there are vaccinations the baby receives there are all kinds that baby is healthy yet there are still vaccines because you are aware that there are certain diseases around that will not spare that baby the reason why our harvest continues to rot in is because we keep preaching and piling people at the gate of the church at the gate of the kingdom but they do not grow in doctrine We keep ordaining people who are immature in the spirit just because of the flamboyancy of gifts or the charismatism that surrounded their being born again. And this is one of the reasons why we have some of the unfortunate things that we have in the body of Christ. There's all kinds of gifted people with profound levels of immaturity. Is God helping us? So let's tie this very quickly. What is the cosmos? This social system. What is it about? Because the Bible says in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Four things. Number one, the earth. Number two, the fullness. Number three, the cosmos. Number four, the people. The earth is the Lord's. Number two, the fullness, the riches, the blessings, the resources. All the contention of hell is for these four things. Please, you have to understand this. This is what we are contending against. This is what Satan wants. He wants the earth. He wants the fullness. He wants to control the mindset of the system. And he wants to control the people. So the Bible tells us the earth is the Lord's. Look up, please. Our corporate mandate is not just to touch the people that dwell therein alone. The reality of the gospel and our mandate, if done efficiently, it will affect the earth, it will affect the fullness, it will affect the world, it will affect them that dwell therein. Any gospel that does not touch these four areas, any dimension of ministry that does not seek to enthrone Christ in and above these four spheres is an ineffective gospel. 
Are we together? Please look up. Keep that scripture there, please. The earth, number one. God is not leaving the earth in isolation. It is still his property. And if he has made us stewards, then there must be something. No wonder he said, you are the light of the world. You are what? The salt of the earth. So he's still interested in the earth. Number two, the fullness thereof, the riches. This settles once and for all the fact that if God desires to cause managers over his resources, we must not allow religion push us to believe that being a steward of God's resources, the fullness belongs to the Lord and the saints must occupy those positions. This is where things like influence is very powerful because it gives you access to the systems, the structures, the resources. Resources are very powerful. They help to amplify ideas. Number three, it says the world, the world, the world, the spiritual sphere and the controlling mindset. This is very powerful. Listen to me, please. Everybody, almost every, I don't know how many billion people today are on social media. Pastor Dele, whether it's, um, I was asking my people when we were just, grabbing a meal quickly and I was telling them what social media platform is the most powerful. I asked them what social media platform is the most disorganized. They didn't even know why I was asking. I said which one is the most organized and which one is the most um, you know, maybe seductive or deceptive. I can't remember what I asked them. I wanted to know. You know why? Because for a long time, Believers have not been interested in the mind control systems that come on earth. The mind control systems is what will institutionalize Christ across every strata of human activities. We cannot focus on, I, I hope what I've been sharing is now making sense. This is, there is a real battle, hear me. Every man of God listening, following, please give us that scripture again. Psalm 24 verse 1 is a major assignment. It's a battle for four things. Number one, the earth. Number two, the fullness. Number three, the mind control systems. Number four, the inhabitants. Let me tell you, remove these four things. Satan will not have any business with any man again. This is the reason why we wake up in the morning. This is the reason why we go to bed. This should be the reason why you go to school. This should be the reason why you get married. This should be the reason why you have children. If, if, if these, these four dimensions, your life is not contributing to revealing and enthroning Christ above them, you are not being useful on earth as far as kingdom is concerned. Is God helping us? Please look up the earth. There are people who will be sent to be the preservers of earth. There are people who will be sent to be preservers of the fullness. An example, Joseph. There are people who will be sent to be the manipulators of the mind control systems. To battle it at the realm of the mind. To see to it that the value systems that are inculcated and are transferred. Today, there are things you cannot do if you are media. Is that true? Mainstream media. Why? Because there is a mind control system. The king of Tyre himself sits there. The fullness of the earth. You say you want to do business and glorify Christ and say you are a kingdom financier and you have drawn a line that will be more than your intellect. You will see forces fighting beyond the realm of business. And you say, I mean, I'm just a businessman. In the devil's mind, he does not know the difference between a preacher, a businessman, a politician. There's only one thing he's checking. Is there something in your life that has a bearing that will enthrone Christ? The attack will be the same. He will attack a preacher like he will attack a businessman because you are equally vulnerable to him. Or I mean you are, you are equally dangerous as far as his agenda is concerned. That means
means businessmen should receive the training of preachers. That means politicians should receive the training of pastors. When we say it's a pastor's conference, in reality it's his friends. Provided you are sent to preserve the earth, the fullness, the mind control system in the cosmos, and the inhabitants, you must be trained. You must be mentored. Can we pray in the spirit again? Your kingdom reigns. Please pray. Yes, it reigns above all, above all. Your kingdom reigns. Yes, it reigns above all, above all. Kingdom reigns above all. Please sit down, just give me a few minutes and we'll tie it up for this night. Let me advise you, please get all the teachings. Get this is not an issue of I have had, just get all these teachings from the beginning of this conference and please. In the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of honesty, just sit down and listen again. The cosmos. There is a battle that many believers are not aware of. The battle for these four things that we showed you has made many die. The battle for this has brought a lot of tragedy to people. People have lost loved ones because of this. The earth, the fullness, the mind control system, and to as far as this agenda is concerned. There's no time to talk about the ecclesia. According to Matthew 16 and verse 18. Maybe I'll just wrap up with the mandate and then we'll pray. Let's understand a bit about kingdom advance. To just touch on that. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 